G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and welcome to the first lesson in my introduction to SQL in Salesforce Marketing Cloud series. SQL is one of the main languages in Marketing Cloud and having a sound knowledge of how to write SQL is key to unlocking the full potential of your data in the platform. For today's lesson, I will introduce the concepts of relational databases and their importance in organizing and managing your data. I'll also step through the fundamental concepts of databases, tables, rows, and columns, as well as relationships between these tables, as understanding these concepts is crucial for working with SQL inside Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So in this lesson, I'll mostly be focusing on the fundamental concepts of relational databases. Now in future sessions, I will be covering more practical SQL and showing you how to build your data and create queries to query those data sets. But for today, we'll be focusing mostly on the theory of how databases work. So the first thing to cover is what is a database? Well, put simply, a database is just a fancy way of saying a collection of structured data on a computer. Now there are many more technical ways to define what a database is, but for the purpose of today's learning and for our SQL training, we're just gonna focus on the fact that a database is just a collection of structured data. Now, when people talk about an SQL database, they're normally referring to a database as a collection of structured tables that contain data. So, what's a table? Well, a table is a structured database object that contains data. But how is that data structured? Well, the data is structured using rows and columns, just like an Excel spreadsheet. Now sometimes you'll hear that columns are referred to as fields, and sometimes rows are referred to as records. Now you're going to hear both of these terms as you explore SQL and go about your learning journey, but it's best to memorize these now so you don't get confused later on. Columns and fields, rows and records. So we have databases and tables, rows and columns, and it's all within this highly structured data format that we finally come to our data the values that are stored within those fields and records. Now, in this highly structured data format, we can easily return the value of some data that is stored in that table by providing an address to look up. Now, in database terms, this is called a query to return some data from our tables based on a criteria. So databases, tables, rows, columns, and data. Now, if your head's spinning about all these different terminologies, don't worry, I'll set you straight. So you see, when it comes to these database terminologies and concepts, you're actually already really familiar with how this all works. You just never realized it. But you see, Microsoft Excel and Google Sheets, and in fact, any spreadsheet program that you ever used is actually just a mini database. In an Excel file on your desktop, for example, you have sheets in that document, and those are just like your tables in a database. Within those sheets, you have columns, which of course are fields, and rows, which are records, and of course, all the values you see on your screen in that spreadsheet is your data. So as you go on your journey of learning SQL, you're going to find out that there's a lot of concepts in SQL that are actually really similar to things you've already learned how to do inside of Excel. As we go through today's lesson, and in fact for the rest of the introduction to SQL course that I'll take you on, any time that I talk about structured data, I want you to visualize your data like as an Excel document with all those sheets and columns and rows and data. That's gonna help you to visualize your data and make this learning process a lot easier on yourself. So speaking of data, let's talk about data types. So just like in Excel, you can represent your data in different ways. Now data can be stored as text or as a number or as a date or many other kinds of formats. And these are called data types. Now, unlike Excel, however, in a SQL table, a data type is applied to the entire column, not just the individual data point. So you'll often see this represented with things like first name as a field being given a text data type, or a customer's date of birth being given a date time data type. Data types are extremely important in structured databases as they can enable certain ways of addressing or querying your data. For example, the datetime data type gives chronological context to its data. It allows you to use logical operators to query those data sets to do things like before and after a given date time. Now, if you don't have this context of date, then you couldn't find things that are before or after a certain value. For example, if your database had stored a customer's date of birth as a text string, then you couldn't use things like before or after because the text string is a word 
and there is no chronological context to a word, there is no before or after. The same thing goes for numbers. If you want to run a query to find, for example, all customers who have over 100 points on their account, then you need to have the points stored as a numeric value to use operators like is equal to or greater than. If you had stored your point values as text, then you can't use those mathematical or counting terms to find the records that you want. But don't worry, because string values or text values have their own unique uses also. For example, with a string or text value, you can query for text records that match or begin with or end with, or even just contain a part of a word in some way. For example, if you're trying to find a list of colors that contain the word red, you can search the colors field, which is a text or a string field, where the color is similar to red, returning light red, red, and dark red. Now, before we get too far down into the technical details of how databases work, I want to try and keep these sessions nice and light and easy to learn from. So I will cover just a couple more concepts before we close out today. One of those key concepts I want to cover is database keys. Now, there are loads of different types of keys, which are just properties for the fields in your tables. But for the purpose of today's learning, and particularly for Salesforce Marketing Cloud's SQL, I'm going to talk about just one type of key, and that is the primary key. Now in SQL, and for Marketing Cloud for that matter, the primary key is applied to a field in your table or data extension to denote it as a unique or identifying value for the data contained in that table. So for example, in a table of your customers, you may have a customer ID field that should be marked as the primary key because its values should be unique. That is, there should only be one row or one customer that contains that unique customer ID value. For a product table, it might be something like the SKU or the product ID. And for the employee table, it might be something like the employee ID and so on. Having a well-defined primary key is critical when building your relational databases. Now speaking of relational databases, the last thing I want to cover for today is going to be table relationships. Now for this concept, I want to explain to you how this works by using a diagram. So here we have a database diagram, also known as an entity relationship diagram, which I've built using dbdiagram.io. This particular relationship table I'll be using throughout the introduction to SQL in Marketing Cloud learning sessions that we go through together. So I'll put a link to this diagram in the video description below. In this diagram we can see a few things, and these are all of our tables to start with. So I have our event reminder table, our customers table, our invoices table, invoice detail, books, book authors, tags, and authors. Now you may have guessed just by looking at these tables and also the fields and data types within, we're looking at a database for a bookshop. So our bookshop, of course, has some books. Those books have names and blurbs and publication dates. Those books do have authors, but sometimes a book's author may have more than one author. And so there has to be a relationship between the book and its authors, plural. We can't just say the book has an author as there may be multiple. And this is where that database relationship design comes in practice. So here we have three tables, authors, books, and book authors. Now we can see as I hover over these tables, certain lines start to become colored and they have little diagrams and images on them. So we can see here that an author has a primary key value of the author ID. And of course, the author's first name and surname. A book has a SKU, its unique product ID, and its name and blurb and price and so on. And they are related to each other through this middle table here. A unique author is related to a unique SKU of a book through this table. Now you can see here the one and the star sign. In database terms, this refers to a one and a many. So one author ID of an author is unique in this table, but it can occur multiple times in this table. And a book, of course, through its SKU, is unique in the books table, but it can also occur multiple times in the SKU of the book author table. So this means that we could have two unique authors that have both authored the same book, relating back to the books table. Let's go through another example using our customers. As I said earlier, a customer ID should always be the unique ID. So for our SQL customers table here, I can see my customer ID is the primary key there. First name, surname, email address, and so on. 
And of course, a customer can buy books. But how do you relate a customer to books? Well, of course, you can't just list out every book a customer has purchased in a comma separated value in their database. That wouldn't be responsible. So we have to make some tables in between our customer and our book to relate that data to one another. So a customer, when they go into a store, will make a transaction. They'll produce an invoice. And so a customer will have invoices. Now, of course, a customer can have multiple invoices. Therefore, the invoice table has a unique invoice ID and the customer ID field relates back to customers in a one to many format. One customer can have many invoices. Now, of course, on an invoice, there could be multiple items that they've purchased. You don't just buy one thing at a time. You could have bought multiple books in one purchase. So the invoice ID relates back to some invoice details. On the invoice, there may have been multiple books that were purchased, which relates back to the invoice ID, which relates back to the customer. So if a customer goes into the store and picks up a book, that book appears as a line item on their invoice with how many they purchased and for how much. That invoice ID and SKU relates back to our invoices table on invoice ID, which relates back to our customer table on customer ID. And now we have a relational database. One customer can have many invoices. Each invoice can have many line items and each book can occur multiple times across different line items across different invoices for different customers. Now, if bookshops aren't quite your thing, let's talk about those same concepts using a data term that is more close to home. Let's talk about the Salesforce Marketing Cloud data views. I'll put a link to this diagram in the description below as well. If we zoom in on this diagram, we can see all the data views we have access to inside a Salesforce Marketing Cloud. And starting off now on the top left hand side, we have of course our subscribers, our unique subscribers within our Marketing Cloud database. A subscriber ID, of course, or a subscriber, can be sent emails, they can open those emails and click those emails. So every time you build and then send an email, it's called a job. And a job ID is rendered to specify that job's uh, reference number. That job will have information about it. For example, when the send took place, the from email name and address, I believe the subject line is down here as well, email name and subject line, there it is. So for each email that you build and then click send in Marketing Cloud, there is a job for it. Once that job is sent out to a subscriber, it relates back based on a sent record, the receipt of that job being sent to a subscriber. You can see here that the job ID relates back to the job ID. And of course the subscriber it was sent to relates back to our subscribers. Now of course, once the email has been sent to a subscriber, they could choose to open that email in their inbox. So that sent job may also have an open record where the job ID and subscriber key relate back of course to the job table and the subscriber key to the subscriber table to reference the fact that this subscriber opened this job on this date and from this domain and was it unique or not. And additionally, if they chose to click a link in that email, the same thing applies. That same relationship between our data sets apply again where the job has been recorded against the job table the subscriber against the subscribers table and of course the event date of that click taking place from what domain to what link, what link name and was it unique. So again our structured relational database exists in Marketing Cloud as well for our email sends. A subscriber can be sent an email job and that job of the email can be opened and can be clicked. And you can navigate this yourself and explore all the different kinds of ways that data can relate inside Salesforce Marketing Cloud. There are heaps of data views to explore, so do take some time, scroll through it and see how each of these data points all relates to one another. All right, so the best way to learn SQL is definitely to roll up your sleeves and jump in and get your hands dirty. But of course, to do this together, we're gonna to have to have some similar data to play with. So I've gone ahead and created these eight data extensions in the likeness of our bookshop database that I showed you earlier. Now, of course, we'll need some sample data as well. So I've also gone ahead and created some sample data for us to load into these data extensions. Now, both the data extension structure, the sample data, and just in case you have package manager access, I've also saved the data extensions as a package that you can download and use for yourself. I'll put all these resources onto a GitHub link, which I'll put into the video description below. 
So rather than watching me go ahead and create these data extensions, you can pause the video now, jump onto the GitHub, download the resources required and build those data extensions for yourself in preparation for lesson number two. And with that, we've come to the end of lesson number one in the introduction to SQL in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Now, I hope you've understood the theory that I've stepped through in today's video, as we will be building upon these concepts in future lessons. And don't forget that SQL is the most common database language out there. So you're gonna find heaps and heaps of free learning resources online in case you want a refresher or do some supplementary learning based on what we've gone through so far today. Just be mindful though, that in Salesforce Market Cloud, we do have a different version of SQL. That's a little bit different to what you're gonna find online as you learn. So be mindful that there are some things you may learn online that you can't apply to Salesforce Marketing Cloud. In the meantime, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss out when lesson two is released. And if you have found today's lesson useful, then please add a big thumbs up to the video. It really helps and lets me know that you enjoy these topics and I'll create more videos like this in Salesforce Marketing Cloud.